uh, MVP sniper needs to go the distance, needs to get first or second place going up against Squirtle, who of course was already qualified, but from looking at my notes, he can actually help out Life, who uh, you know is trying to qualify as well here, does need help with other results, and you know, everything is on the line. It's still an important game for both these guys. Now just to clear things up, these guys aren't teammates either, and so yeah. we'll see just how far you know the genial hand will be extended here, uh, if he's willing to help Life out or not, but of course Squirtle a competitor to the bone, he is not going to give up, he wants first place, so can't expect anything less but the best from him today. And it appears that we're en route, so here spawning in the top left of the map, we do have MVP Sniper playing as the purple Zerg. And in the bottom left of the map, it is going to be none other than ST Squirtle playing as the red Protoss. Squirtle is actually a very dangerous opponent to play with. He was one of the guys, uh, especially within the GSL, that focused on the fake cancel. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've been on a lot of Street Fighter recently. It's really uh, Oh, dash yeah, cancel, gonna break that in there, Focus cancels. Dash cancel it now, uh, because he does like to plant that third nexus down and be like, cancel, and just go attack. Uh, you know, bring the war prison with whatever he does, and especially <laughs> on a map like this, um, where, uh, you, like you said uh, initially, is that Zerg players be like, ah, oh, God, Protoss, they're very good on this map, and the reason why is because they do have easy access to a third base. So if you put that and plus that, with the fact that you know he, he's shown a, a, in a defensive third base, mm -hmm. then you cancel it and it's like double wham, and all of a sudden you can get punished pretty hard for that. Yeah, um, lots of possibilities so that's for mind games. You absolutely, has to be careful about. Well, we'll see already. A good scout here, figuring out exactly where his opponent is right off the bat. Good Overlord is going to make his way in there and be fairly happy to find out where Squirrel is on the map in that bottom spawning location. And he sees, actually, the Nexus first. Uh, any thoughts on that? He may actually save Lava and go six links. Um, because if you think about the, what, the way that this is um, set up on the ramp, is you can't really wall it off completely. Well, maybe you can, but you have to use a lot of resources to do so. An extra pylon will need to come down and so on. But let's have a look what he does. He's got three Lava available in a minute. Well, there, there it is. So, is he going to build six links? And uh, it doesn't look like he's. He's only built. He's actually building a drone. So, killer. Uh, I mean, not killer. Sorry, yeah. he's actually name killer in the replay here. But um, you know, sniper's actually an individual who has a very strong late game. Mm -hmm. As Zerg, he, he is a guy that likes to go. Um, if he sees a fast third, he's not a Zerg player that will go ahead and be like, okay, now it's time to attack. He's a guy that will be like, okay, now it's time for infestation pit and fourth. You know, he's that kind of guy. Um, so that actually doesn't surprise me that he's squeezing the drone first and then build four links. And the four links are that's, not trying to do anything aggressive. Yeah, that's a bit of the standard move. You just get those four links out there, get a bit of map control, track down that probe to try and deny any of those forward pylons, those pesky forward pylons. Mm. And he's already making his way over to snag his uh, third base. And no, uh, no, uh, Squirtle isn't contending this. He's going to let it be and just let uh, Sniper find his groove here. Yeah, and we do see the probe uh, actually on the right hand side. Is it going to get beaten oh. down by these links? Maybe. Ah, uh, yeah, he must have. Spotted yeah, it he's gonna get it, and unfortunately, that probe didn't get the scout of the third base, so he doesn't actually know it's there. Um, and because of that, he may need to uh, waypoint a zealot immediately across the map to actually find out if it's there. Um, despite knowledge that his opponent, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing these guys have played on ladder before, they've probably played multiple times in tournaments as well online. So, I mean, Squiddle can already say, Well, this guy is a macro Zerg, he does prefer the late game, but you can't make assumptions that heavy. On something like this, I, I'm pretty sure that he needs to go. Well, I'm, I'm certain he needs to go scout to see if that third's actually there. Yeah, we might have a second probe make his way out here. It is, yeah. is this a full wall off, or is there space for a zealot? That's such a very that, good question. That, I think that's a full wall. That off. seems like a full wall off. So he's actually going to play this blind, yeah, or at least a, wait until if he goes robot. Oh well, there's a stargate, so that will yeah. make things apparent in a minute. That's a, that's a, you could not notice that. I didn't actually notice that full wall off, which means that. Uh, with the Stargate coming out, he could have gone Robo actually, and could have gone Immortal, and yeah. break down the rocks into faster, but with the Void Ray coming down, or Stargate coming down, most likely going to be a single Void Ray backed up with 3 to 4 Phoenix, and then into an expansion play, simply because of walling off like this, it's very unusual to wall off and then do aggressive play. Um, and especially, I mean, I guess he could still fake out the base as well, and um, that's still a possibility. Mm -hmm. Break down the rocks and then go from there, but uh, the Void Ray is going to pop out uh, straight away. And, and there's the Overlord. Yeah, there's the Overlord. Overlord is going to spot it just in the nick of time. Very well done there. So he sees the Stargate yeah. finishing up. Now, will he, see, he actually didn't stick around to see what was building out of it, mm -hmm. but I guess he's assuming that a Void Ray is about to come out. Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird to scope the old Phoenixes because everyone just expands. You kind of need Void Rays to slow a third down, mm -hmm. uh, slow a fourth down potentially, or anything like that. And that's what we're going to see. I doubt he'll add on additional Void Rays as well. That's pretty risky. And, you know, that may lean to more, towards more of a two base all in, which I wouldn't pass, pass Squirtle. He's that kind of guy. 
He's that kind of guy, man. He is that kind He's of guy. Kind You've of been, guy. You made it apparent already with those third Nexus cancels, the mind games coming out. <laughs> I don't think that Overlord is going to make it away. I can see him trying to desperately float his way back to base. I but... wish I had Overlord. Oh, why am I not an Overseer? But uh, so far, I mean, look at this. There's no rogue touring down uh, at all. Straight to evolution chamber. Uh, you know, straight to plus one whatever upgrade. Mm -hmm. And we'll have to see what that's going to be. Uh, and do crawls down though, really early. Nice. Yeah. Do you think that's just because he knows that there's not going to be any ground aggression coming yeah. out of this? You know, the void ray's coming. Absolutely. He doesn't necessarily need to produce units. He can just keep cranking out queens and drones, and he should be fairly safe. Yeah, absolutely. And especially with the the tendency of this map as well is you don't really see a void ray into aggression. It's kind of a void ray into third base. Mm -hmm. um, especially with the, the, the thing that he also saw was that this was a complete wall off as well so he can most likely put two or two together here um, but you know Squirtle we have to be very careful if he does try and hit funky here but there's the plus one uh, range actually coming out interesting, um, interesting pick, you know, yeah. this is something that Zerg players have been adjusting into they're actually going back to Roach Hydra Corruptor weirdly enough and Hydra's are actually fantastic um, and it, it makes things more streamlined adding in Hydra's into the late game um, it just seems better at the moment with the the Brutal Infestor army, they just have so much DPS, and of course, Blink Stalkers can't jump in. But we'll see. Roach One is down anyway, just a lot later on, focusing heavily on drones. 60 with yeah, more up to 60 now. Uh, yeah, more on the way as well, up to five. So he's going to be getting a really healthy economy behind him, and he actually does need to do that. Seeing as how if he's going Hydra Corruptor, etc., that's very gas intensive. He's going to need those six gases. He's going to need that dr those drones behind it to back that sort of thing up. Uh, we'll see when he decides to grab those gases on that third. Yeah, I mean that's going to be the count there. There, there it is. Just grab yeah. the third, and the infestation pit comes down here. So we won't have enough gas for infestors and Hydra, so it will be just uh, infestors here. But there's that kind of style. He he is a guy that will who actually has seen the third base as well, mm -hmm. and will now simply say, alright, great, I'll take my full base in a second, I will play the later game, as he's very strong in there. Uh, but we do have the Void Rays moving out, and with an Observer, the annoying little thing, until you actually have Infestors out, this can happen, man, the Creep Tumors will go down. Yeah, that is a bit of a pesky business to be making in, and there we go. This, I like that though. The Phoenix is going to make its way in. He notices that the gases are taken, that he sees exactly what's coming at him, seeing as how the Infestation Pit was scouted as well. But Look at this, more information on top of everything else, he gets the fourth base. Yeah, I mean, all he's doing is basically three basing really fast, uh, what Squirtle's doing, but completely scouting his opponent. Infestation pit, gas scout, uh, we've got the hatchery, the fourth hatchery down, so he knows about that as well. He's actually doing damage to it. Um, I'd be very surprised if he would manage to actually get a kill here. Queens. Off creep need to get their ass their way there. across, uh, but they should be able to get there in time. Uh, we do actually have double evolution chamber, and actually after the missile attacks has gone completely over into uh, plus one carapace and also the plus one uh, melee attack. So it will be the style, the traditional style. And oh god, yeah, that, it looks like he might yeah Ooh. cancel. So well played there. Even if he loses the void, that's actually kind of worth it, wouldn't yeah. you say? Yeah, yeah, that's actually massive. I mean that that helps a lot because. As you know, if third base is down as the pros, you need to take that fourth if you are not going to do aggression. But oh God, can't afford to lose any of those roaches either. Every every unit value is um, matters at this point. And a nice early hive at 11 minutes, and it was spotted immediately. I know this phoenix, this one phoenix has got so much information for Squirtle. He's kept tabs on everything that Sniper's been up to. And he's thrown down additional gateways down, so he's at a total of seven, seven, eight, eight nine, nine, ten, ten eleven. Man. 12. <laughs> so he's throwing down a lot of gateways here. Um, he's got two choices now, Squiddle. He just says, alright, let's go before that hive is done. That was really fast hive. He doesn't really have any ground units. And once again, he can scout with the phoenixes. He's spine curls being made just simply roaching limbs with really poor upgrades. He can just go now that plus two attacks on the way. Or he can sit back and take a fourth base and then go ahead and get Stargate down and start to look for the mothership or so on. But with the addition of new cannons on the natural, I think he could go for this here. Yeah, this and looks... if, especially with Storm on the way too. He's gonna have a great answer, especially to those Lings. If he gets Storm, yeah. he gets a few High Templars out there. Those Lings are going to evaporate. They will do no damage at all. And then what do you have? You have Roaches saying yeah. hello to Immortals, and that is never a happy day for a Zerglin. So let's see if he can hit this timing. Um, I mean, he could still take a fourth base, but the way that he's building pylons out in the ground, in the open, suggests that he may decide to move across. And there's the Walk Prism as well in the production tab. He's absolutely going to go for this. Uh, will want to try and kind of boost that plus three as much as possible. It will most likely kick in as the fight's already started. Um, but with High Tempo on the mix, they can be used for feedback, Storm, you name it. But he's got, you know, he's running out of time. The Greatest Spy is in construction. It's 40, 60 seconds away. And do we have any Corruptors in the air yet? No, none yet. 
So just interesting to see when he is going to decide it's time to make his yeah. move, as he is actually getting ready to take his fourth as well, so perhaps not fully committing to this attack, but definitely looking to do some damage. Yeah, oh, absolutely. This is the perfect opportunity to do so. Uh, we have a Void Ray, Kitlin, oh, and Extractor. Pulling them out of position as well. Pulling them out of position, exactly. And here comes the little movement out, but will he be able to do enough damage? spines and a lot of investors yeah this is fantastic he has to be so very careful about how he goes up against this wall seeing as how fungal growth hold you right down in front of those spines and all of a sudden you're taking massive damage with the roach and ling jumping in as well but we do have a bit of an engagement here and that's exactly what we're talking about the fungal goes down spines getting three hits sniper being careful though he's being very patient seeing how this goes seeing as it looks like squirtle will be fended off at least for the moment Although the War Prism is getting those backup units in there. And he hasn't taken that fourth uh, Nexus either yet, so he's still going with this. The Fleet Beacon has come down, so he will be going for that fourth base momentarily. He, look at he this. feels that he can't break it by the looks of it. And he's going to attempt a different angle here, a weaker angle for sure. Yeah, fantastic defense though. Already Spine's waiting at that fourth. He knows that it's going to be a point of contention. Good feedback on that Infester. No fungal there. But we do have the engagement coming here as... Oh, this is very rough though. Very big choke here. And if Storms get off, all of Sniper's army could be gone in seconds. Yeah, the thing is that the, the Sniper's army is so weak because he rushed the Hive so fast. He's got great tech, but he's got bad upgrades. Storm. Baiting out those storms though. He is baiting them and out. He is running out of storms. He has one, two storms left, three storms left. Oh, but the money storm going down right on top of those roaches. The lings disappear. Those plus two, now soon to be plus three zealots going to work. Some good damage going down, but ah, look at that. Mind control coming out onto those immortals, and the immortals actually doing immense damage to those stalkers. And this actually could be a very nicely done defense here by Sniper. Yeah, this is a really good defense there. If only he could actually get rid of the Rock Prison, but I don't think it matters now. He pushes that back in a great defense here. Remember, guys, Sniper needs to finish first or second in this tournament to actually qualify for TSL 4. Squirrel has already qualified for this. The Warp Prison remains, and it is going to try and bring the space down. It did fall down, which is something to keep you know, think about that actually is hurting the Zerg a lot in terms of income. But now with Squirtle taking a fourth base and Mothership is on the way, Cannon's going to fortify that area and of course the game will continue. Uh, this is really interesting. It's turning into one of those textbook kind of CDP matchups where they go into the late game and it comes down to that engagement where it's, you know, can you get the Vortex off? Can you get them down the toilet? Uh, but we do have... Uh, you know, he is setting up that fourth base, as you said, and so this means that fourth base, you know, Protoss, he's going to have that full roaring economy. He's already got great infrastructure set up with all those gateways, and so Squirtle's going to become more and more dangerous. It just depends on how fast Sniper can get these broods out and start pushing and knocking down that front door. Yeah, and you know, in terms of who's in the lead right now, absolutely Squirtle with killing that fourth base and keeping his own or putting his own up. The War Prism does finally fall down in the, the north side. We're popping out two zealots, and he's trying to save the queen. That's a drinking game in England. <laughs> it actually is. You, you like you. Whoever puts a coin because the, the coin has a queen's head on it. Okay. You put a coin in a drink and then you shout, "Save the queen!" And you have, you have to, to chug it drink. without yeah, swallowing the. Yeah, because you have to get the queen, man. <laughs> you gotta save that girl. That poor queen. I don't know if she includes that in <laughs> as part of it. What is she supposed to be handling? But every time someone goes out drinking, the queen at home sitting in her own chair goes. <laughs> Dude, you know there's that Twitter account going out where it's like Jen o'clock and everything? The, yeah. the impersonation of the queen? She's excellent. Like, 6 o'clock on the day every day. She's like, Jen o'clock, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> time to drink. I'm like, it's oh, also I the Big Ben Twitter, too. Yeah. yeah. Big ben on Twitter, guys. You want to know every hour. <laughs> you got to follow the queen, though. The queen is amazing. All right, so we have the Food Lords on the way out now. Great upgrades now kicking in for uh, Sniper. Only plus three. Uh, actually, he hasn't got plus three carapace. I guess he's kind of gas style trying to build up Brood Lord Infestor that's Army. The thing. I mean, he's only just getting that fourth base up and running with those extra gases, and that's so crucial, getting the Brood Lords in position. Uh, I can't really afford to lose these Infestors. A parting hello from one of them, but... Uh, that is a bit of a sad situation. Although, we do have the fifth base going up for Squirtle now as well. The cannons, are they going to get up in time to deny this? Yeah, he's going to keep this base there we in go. this lovely jubbly there for Squirtle. who's actually walking out with a warp prism or flying out with a warp prism on the top right hand side. And if he lands on uh, that base and ah. starts landing on Zealots, that will fall immediately. But Brutal Army is making its way down. Yeah, the flock of Brutal Lords making its way there. Available. There's a lot of Zerg army spines. Oh, even bringing the spines in. I love it. Great job here by Sniper. This is a great way to start things off. A uh, little bit of a preemptive storm going off. Not really doing too much damage. Kind of just bristling their hides. But it's not too much of an issue. Seeing as how those broods are supposed to be. Uh, the Zealot's actually going to work here on the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th base of Sniper. 1, 2, 3, 4. Just got to make sure we get that oh. count right. The pile on the cannon goes down on Squirtle's fourth base. It now is an exposed nexus, and Squirtle has to do something about this. He can't just fall over and give his fourth base away. Oh, nice. Baiting out the fungals as well. Good blink away, just in the nick of time. 
reactions coming into play here. Ooh, and look at this. Sniper's moving out. He's got position in the fourth base and is about to take it on the fifth base. Squirtle is in the water. Should be able to do something right now. Sniper's just, you know, completely rolling all over him. Oh, he does donate two Broodlords, though, and that's a bit of a shame. Will the one make it away? No, the one last shot from the Stalker is actually sniping it off. So, oh, but look at this counter harass coming from these four Zealots. Those are, four, those are the same Zealots yeah. that took out the fifth as well. And he didn't kill the fourth, and he didn't kill the fifth of Squirtle. Oh, wow. no, this is a dire situation indeed. Wow, he wow, does wow, need wow, to do wow. damage now. These Broodlords have to get in there and start hammering home because if he doesn't slow Sni uh, Squirtle down now, it's going to be so brutal to come back from. Yeah, it's nuts. And he's about to have two Vortexes as well momentarily here. He's at 175 energy, plus one air weapons on the way. And with all the gas from all these bases, he's about to retake. He can actually call the carriers, uh, Void Rays. It doesn't matter. There's not really an answer. The Zerg play does have 9,000, well, 900,000, 9, 9, 9, no. gas, uh, a thousand gas that's in the back, but that's like just whatever, you know, a couple more brood laws or whatever, that's going to fall down immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, the war prison in the top right will finally fall, that war prisoner brought down the fourth and the fifth base, and Squiddle, untouched. Yes. He's keeps his bases alive. He's keeps his bases. He's got Archons up now for another toilet. And once again, dude, he's just nonstop producing these war prisms. Yeah. There's a good flock of uh, corruptors left, yeah. over here, though. And they're going to be able to take it out eventually. But that's just going to be a pesky thorn in Sniper's side. He's just constantly having to watch his back lines and make sure that he's not getting, you know, going to be losing those bases once again. So many Archons here. Nine yeah, Archons that's all with this army. And if he lands that Vortex on that Brutal army, goodbye. It's really coming down to that, though. Like, it's going to be that one crucial engagement where you just yeah. lose everything and all this stuff. Yeah. If he grabs the mothership uh, and, you know, vortexes him, it's, it can still go either way. Eight more Brutalords being morphed. Ballsy oh, move, actually. Gosh. And we have plus two uh, attack for the air and also plus one armor, so he will also be going into carriers Good golly, uh, shortly here. Yeah. <laughs> you Hop his uh, you in his little chair in, uh, <laughs> in office. And Squirtle now moving out. Three strong army. But there's a lot of Broodlords here, and if they're yeah. spread out, two uh, Vortexes, you know, still it covers a lot of surface area. They have to be so very careful about this, though. I mean, yeah. both of them playing extremely safe, just trying to find that one chink in their opponent's armor. And, uh, I mean, will it happen? It's, it's just so tense because it's just that one engagement. If you mess it up, you could yeah. lose right there. You could have played the game of your life, but that one engagement could decide yeah. it all. Especially with the money they have. They, I mean, the money they don't have. <laughs> that one engagement, you lose your army, you will not be making it, basically. Uh, the Void Ray production is starting to kick in. Four extra Stargates as well, coming down, but such a heavy brutal army has to spread Here out. we have it. God. Oh, and look at this. He's caught Squirtle out of position. Squirtle actually going to have to engage this army from behind. What an awesome position of using this... Uh, Crag? Yeah, what is that? I, I guess... Uh, Hole in the ground. Hole in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, very nicely done, though. Look at that. He's just forcing Squirtle away, and the Broodlings are going to take out that fourth base. There is still the fifth base pumping away, so that's not too shabby for Squirtle. He's even working on a new fifth base, I suppose. But um, this is just a great position to find himself in. He's completely split Squirtle up from his main base and all the production as well. Ooh, if you can grab the normal. Yeah, <laughs> That'd be he's fantastic. Looking for it. I know he is, he's but is Squirtle baiting it? Like, he's kind of ah, just like, come back. Oh, big bags go down up through the investors they don't get the normal. Ah, but there's no neural, but also there's a wasted vortex. Did anything get caught in that at all? I don't know, actually. I wasn't really looking. I was looking at the neural. So, no, oh, great blink up to the brood loads, though. And we did actually catch three of them, and the Archons don't even attack them. Oh, there's another Vortex going down, but once again, most of the Broodlords escaping unscathed. And so, once those Corruptors get back in, the Mothership is actually going to fall fairly quickly here, and that's actually a big asset for Squirrel that's just gone to waste. And, you know, uh, Sniper's in a good position there. A lot of Bailing just detonate on the Archons don't really do anything, but there's so many Broodlords that he just didn't nail the right Vortexes. He got somebody, didn't kill them, and they got out and went back in again, and... Back out. Oh, and he's going to be herded back into this corner now. Look at this. The brute force closing oh, in. Nowhere to go. There's and Waiting for him. Yeah, that is a nice score. Oh, following it up, too. He's got quite a lot of energy on those. Orange help already just because of those storms, but there's no storms left now. There's no flanking army whatsoever. There are five carriers on the way, but these units and this new base is cornered. Five carriers, ballsy move, but yeah, well, he's, he looks like he's fixing up his entire army and sniper still at 200, 200. All of that bank able to reproduce everything on the spot. There is a bit of a stalker hit squad making its way up top, but is that going to be enough to draw sniper back? If he kills hatcheries with these stalkers and lowers the gas count again, potentially the carriers could work. But there's 3,000 gas in the bank here for sniper, and that means. 
any amount of corruptors can come out, and that means carriers suck. Uh, despite their upgrades, which are really, really good here, corruptors with plus two attack on the way, they will bring the carriers down. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, he, the only thing that he doesn't really have supply to do so. He'll narrow um, the carriers. Yeah, you could possibly. You could well. you could. <laughs> I just love that move there that we saw Sniper use. You just burrow all the drones, and uh, oh yeah, okay, there goes your harass. Where's your observer, bro? But uh, so far, once again, it's, but it just seems like Sniper is once again in this commanding lead where he's just, he just, he got that engagement that he wanted. He baited out the Vortex, didn't lose, hardly lost anything to them, and all of a sudden, Squirtle's army disappears. And where does he sit? He's just way ahead with all of these Broodlords and all the tech backing it up. You know, it's like I said at the start of the game, is Sniper's a guy that loves late game, and this is why he's so cost efficient with the units. See, though, even though they're very expensive, he doesn't really waste them. I haven't really seen him throw anything away here, and that's the reason why he has so much money in the back. He's not rebuilding all the time. He's got the Ultra's coming down as well, and now the carriers are about to be revealed for the first time. They are now spotted by Broodlings, and immediately, he will probably want to trade his army off and then just rebuild in Corruptors. Yeah, those Ultralisks, I mean, they're cool, but are they going to be very useful against this? This is amazing. Storms going down on those Zerglings as well. All of the Zerglings nearly annihilated. This is so good against the heavy units here. Oh my god, oh my god. And Fungal's going down as well. We have the Infested Marines, but is it going to be enough to deal with this? Sniper's army is evaporating. He is re... Look at this though, he is remaxing 17 Corruptors on the way, and he still has 3,000, 3,000 in the bank. That's insanity. Yeah, Squiddle has got an awesome unit out. They're well <laughs> but they are not about to survive versus 17 Corruptors, no matter how you look at it. And even if these blue lords die, it doesn't matter because there's no ground on for Squiddle anyway. He's not mining anywhere. That's it, the yeah. The tab shows 80. 80, oh my he's god. He's got a few mineral patches left somewhere. He's, on the third base, maybe, I don't know, but... Uh, it's these two final carriers, man. These two yeah. final carriers, they'll make all the difference. And it's going to turn the tide. The carriers are and even those zealots, look at that, look at that. Sniper's even donating some zealots. He's like, here, man, I heard you were low on army. Have, Have some zealots. <laughs> you don't get a little wow. Have you ever seen the change in the film? It's been terrible. No. Of Angelie Jolie. Oh, no, no, I don't watch any of her shit. <laughs> She's fucking god-awful. Uh. It was a bad film. It was It bad, was about some yeah. kid being stolen and being replaced by a different kid. Yeah, that's... that's <laughs> oh, Fungal down on the carriers, and as, and as much as I love Great Storm, that's the only Great Storm, so though. But that's what we need is, to see. He can rebuild the Corruptors again! <laughs> he does, he's got so much money in the back, and the carriers are finally falling down. So. That's, I mean, yeah, he's just got a stranglehold on Squirtle. Squirtle is just eventually going to have to tap out, because, yeah. hey, what's up when you're in a stranglehold? You run out of air and die. And eventually, that's exactly what Squirtle's gonna do. Yeah, look at that. Carriers go down. Only four remain here. Eight more Corruptors on the way, of course. Three Corruptors remain, I think. Just about two Corruptors, one Corruptor. But it doesn't matter because the, the Zerg army is well supported. It has a decent bank. It has a good economy. Yeah. And, there's and there it is, the GG. Alright, Squiddle falls down.